Hello everyone, this is Nikita with Action Esports. Today, we will start a new series called Deck Spotlight. This series is to showcase any interesting decks that might be popular in tournaments, expert constructed, or a unique off-meta deck that's shaking up the scene. Enjoy! Red Black Aggro this particular version is Hoey's list that he took to the Wii Play tournament and came second place in, losing to Hyped's blue-green combo. Hyped was terrified of this deck and the finals ended up being very close, possibly going either way. We will have a link to the match in the description below. Not to be confused with the Red Black Econ deck that snowballs with expensive items, Red Black Aggro is instead a hard-hitting deck that excels at killing heroes quickly and pushing tons of damage. This deck list can be found in the description also. Let's start with the heroes. The starting three heroes, Axe, Phantom Assassin, and Legion Commander are staple red-black heroes that are just too good to include no matter what the deck, and excel at being the starting heroes, but not anything interesting to discuss. The two other heroes are the ones that stand out. Sorla Khan, that comes in on round two, has a great kit for an aggro deck. Her stat line is pretty aggressive, alongside her passive that deals extra damage to towers. Her cheap signature is also excellent at pushing the offensive further in a lane, buffing all allies with additional tower damage. For round 3, Tinker is another aggressively statted card, but is mainly present to provide utility instead. Tinker's active ability allows you to gain a lot of tempo, either by protecting your units from taking hits or denying your opponent damage. The cool thing about Tinker is that strong red cards like Berserker's Call and Duel become useless if you disarm their only red hero in the lane. Tinker's signature card is another card that provides significant tempo. This card not only serves as a board clear, but also as a means to push extra damage. Why bother with the enemies when you can just hit the tower, right? Your overall game plan will be to get rid of your opponent's heroes early. This can be achieved by having your well-statted heroes fight the enemies, or by using cheap cards like Duel or Gank to force the fight if they're not positioned correctly. Once you get ahead on the board, use Assault Ladder to further advance on the tower. Let's look at some key cards that can help you achieve a quick victory. Oath is a unique inclusion here. It's a high-risk, high-reward card, stopping you from playing any creeps or spells in that lane. Nevertheless, plus 4 attack is a great reward and played at the right time can finish off a lane in one swoop. The Oath can be played in any lane, so if you are in lane 1 and you don't have a black hero in lane 2 and you want to advance more damage in that lane, then you can play this improvement from where you are. Oath's condition is that you cannot play creep or spell cards, so you can still play items and additional improvements like more Oaths or Assault Ladders. The market is generally stagnant in its prices, but after Hoei and Sixo tech this card into their decks, the card nearly doubled in value, but has since settled. There are quite a few creeps in the deck, and all of them are cheaply costed. This is to help you consistently push out that early damage I was talking about earlier. Your improvements won't do much if you don't have a decent number of units. The random melee creeps are just not enough. Bronze Legionnaire and Stone Hall Elite never take any damage against regular melee creeps, so they are great to play early. Stone Hall Elite buffs itself after a unit blocking it dies, so getting it out early will force your opponent to deal with it. If they don't, it will scale nicely into the late game. Legion Standard Bearer may not seem like much, but even with zero attack, it has significant strategic uses, as it can both block a few hits and enable its neighbors to trade more efficiently. Similarly, Tyler Estate Sensor is another card that usually flies under the radar. Sometimes Tyler can block opponents' key turns, such as the turn they would play Time of Triumph or Emissary of the Quorum. It comes with a decent body as well, so it's a good play at most points in the game. Now let's move on to the item deck, which strays a bit far from the norm. There is a lot of blue-green hate in here, with Hourglass and the Maul. Signet Ring to beat the Econ decks and Phase Boots to attack or avoid key targets. It's definitely teched for the tournament, and you can make some replacements to fit it for whatever meta you're expecting. You don't want to always use your gold for buying items though. Sometimes you could save it to use on Mercenary Exiles. Since it's 3 mana, you could bait your opponent into using all of their tower's mana and then sneak out this creep on an empty spot to deal massive amount of damage in one hit. Initiative is really valuable. This tip applies to all artifact games, but especially when you want to use it to remove your opponent's units. Cards like Duel, Berserker's Call, and Coup de Grasse benefit greatly from initiative. This is similar to the role Gust provides for blue-green decks. You remove their heroes so they aren't able to play cards, and in addition, you now have an unblocked ally that can push damage to the tower. Another concept to keep in mind is using multi-lane cards effectively. All of the improvements in the deck, plus gank, are multi-lane. If you have mana left over, or if you don't have a black hero in a lane, it might be the right time to play that multi-lane card. Gank can remove a unit in a different lane instantly since your opponent can protect it from where they are currently. Phantom Assassin in particular can extract a lot of value out of gank, potentially killing multiple heroes in a turn. 
This is another one of those decks that can either win two lanes or alternatively win a single lane by defeating the Ancient. So, don't commit too early to either game plan. Your heroes are great at pushing multiple lanes while your improvements are awesome at pushing a single lane. Assess the board state and slowly figure out what strategy you would like to go with. Aggro is a strategy that relies on being ahead in strength at all times. Position your creeps, heroes, and improvements carefully to maximize damage output and create smart trades that will leave you ahead after the combat phase. Anticipate board wipes and removal from your opponent and do not be scared to play into those reactionary cards so they are not available to use later. By no means is aggro a brain dead deck to play. While the lines to victory can seem easier to assess than other more interactive strategies, you will still have to focus on cleverly dealing and taking damage throughout the game. Pilot with the strength of a warrior, but the brain of a tactician. Alongside this video, we will be uploading a separate gameplay video of this deck with commentary by Aviera. Link in the description. Let us know in the comments what other deck spotlights you would like to see and subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.